You won't get on a plane to this day, right? No. Mm -hmm. Your daughter predicted the crash? My daughter was hysterically crying, like, like beyond... Before it, you flew? Yeah, before, the day I left. And the day I left, I was like... You'd flown a lot. In the yeah, I mean, it, can, it comes with the territory, with what I do. Sometimes we'd fly twice a day, you know, she depending on She didn't want you were. to fly that day. Didn't want me to fly that day. Hysterically kept crying, saying the roof's gonna come off. And I was like, what, what happened? Was there like an earthquake this morning? Did she see like something shake? Like what, what triggered this? And um, she just kept screaming it and crying it. The landing gear popped, it sounded like gunshots. It was like, it sounded like someone was shooting a gun next to my head. Um, and then the plane just spiraled out of control. It would come what, down. What goes, uh, everyone thinks about this, what goes through your mind? Did you have much time to think? For me, it was my biggest fear already, and it was coming true. You didn't you know? like flying? I hated flying. I had a dream when I was 19, I was gonna die in a plane crash. Like, I got drunk, and I didn't really drink, and I told my manager that. And he was like, what are you talking about? And I think just from a young age, I saw my mom fly with me one time, and she was very upset. And it just was always something I didn't care to do. How'd you live? Um, I don't know. Thrown? I was blessed. I was blessed. Were you thrown you know? from the plane? I, I had a seatbelt on, so I was one of the only people that was awake. Mind you, I was on a lot of drugs while being on the plane, and I just basically braced for impact every time. You know, the plane basically would go up in the air and then it would crash down and hit the ground. And then it would come up and then it would crash down and hit the ground. And every time we hit the ground, the flames and the smoke would get bigger. And, you know, right before, I mean, towards the, you know, the last, before the last impact, the plane was completely on fire. We were a, a, a ball of fire in the, in the sky. And then we actually came down to do the same thing, whatever was going on. I have no idea what was going on you know, um, in the front area of the plane, where we go down to swoop back up and we hit an embankment. And um, and I was honestly just waiting for lights out. I was just waiting for the next impact. There's a picture of it in the book. Of the yeah. Book. And you and, and Adam lived, right? Yeah. And pilots died and two other people. Yeah. And Adam, was he burnt too? He, uh, well, when I jumped, I, I caught fire trying to go to the front of the plane to save my two friends and get to the pilots, possibly, and I caught fire. I, I basically, um, I, I, you know, get very, very scared, and I, I run, I grab Adam, he's passed out. I open the emergency exit, I jump into the jet fuel. So my whole body is engulfed in flames at this point. Adam sees me jump into the actual jets and become, like, you know, fully on fire, and he jumps around and follows me, and he's literally on his phone calling our manager going, our plane crashed, like, Travis is on fire, like, he, you know, he's cursing, he's yelling, and then um, as I'm running, uh, you know, because the embankment was a highway, so someone in a car, like, people are screaming, and they say, you know, just like what we learn in school, like, stop, drop, and roll. And, and I hear it, and I do exactly that. And then the only place Adam got burnt is, you know, my feet were soaked in jet fuel. So he actually patted out my feet, and he ended up burning himself on his arm and a little bit on the back of his head. And you had third-degree burns, right? I had 65% of my body burnt in third-degree burns. The pain of burns is terrible, isn't it? It's the most painful experience, obviously, I've ever been there. After 9-11, I visited the burn center in New York, and there was one guy, I guess he might have died, the third-degree burns all over his body. Yeah. They, he was nude. They couldn't put a sheet on him. Yeah. That's how I was. I was wrapped, I was, I was pig cadaver, was stapled to me, and I was completely nude, you know, in the, in the hospital. And then, you know, when you're burnt, you know, when you're burnt, especially like how I was or any, like the, the person you're talking about, they put you in this huge metal pan about three times the size of this table and they scrub you with a metal brush every other day to get all the infection out. Um, and, you know, graft, you know, the procedures of getting grafts, you know. I had 27 surgeries. It was, it was, uh, it was uh, an experience, you know. And for me, I was, unfortunately, I was medicating myself recreationally before the accident to where none of the medicines were working. So I'd wake up mid-surgery, you know. Ugh. Um, in so much pain. But, I mean, I, I can't say enough good things about the Grossman Burn Center. They took great care of where me. Where was that? Uh, right here in Los Angeles. Like, they're, a, they're the best burn center in the country. <laughs>